there's exactly 121 degrees between them. 11 times 11. So here on May 1st, the 121st day of the year, we declare victory in Iraq. And now D.C. and Babylon are joined together. I just think that's interesting. Here's what the Bible says. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you where I'm going with this. And I'm going to have to quit talking here. I have a massive sore throat today. I mean, I'm just like getting every word out in agony and pain. And so I'm going to quit talking here in a little bit. Our nation, I believe, was founded upon this Bible right here. Okay? In spite of what some other people say, I think the heart of America exists because of this Bible. We're seeing a situation right now where the, the people of God are turning themselves over to the spirit of Babylon, mystery Babylon. And I will tell you, just and God gave us an example by ancient Babylon. Ancient Babylon is a city that was d destroyed. Okay? It wasn't until Nebuchadnezzar II, uh, Saddam Hussein, came back and rebuilt it again. Um, and there's all kinds of spiritual things with that as well. But I think that Babylon was to be an image in the minds of any city, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, of any people that decided that the world's way and the devil's way and the way of sin was better than God's way. I'm telling you that God's way is better. And, God, and when you follow God you'll stand and you'll remain standing. When you follow after the devil, you will fall. And that's all there is to it. Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city. Notice that it says it twice. Okay, that's the, that's the language of the scripture. A partial fulfillment and a future perfect fulfillment in the last days. And then Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. He cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils. In the hold of every foul spirit, in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich to the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Now, Babylon is a, is a big concept, and no, I don't believe that it's just Washington, D.C. I don't believe that it's just the Vatican, but I believe that it includes all of that. And this whole idea of Babylon is a, is a big concept. But I will tell you that Babylon represents basically the, the entire world and the world systems. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is to come out of the world. Come out, okay? Now, I'm not saying move to Montana where you've got a little ranch there and you're not going to be bothered by anybody. Unless, of course, you already live on a ranch in Montana, okay? Then, then I might move in with you. Uh, but anyway, coming out of the world's systems, okay? Don't be partakers of the world, which means don't, don't follow after the worldly abusements. Don't follow after worldly ways. Uh, <clears throat> don't listen to the world's advice. Listen to God's advice. Follow God's ways. Follow God's path. Yes, we have to live in this world. Yes, living in this world requires money. Yes, our money has an Illuminati signature on the back. Yes, the financial institutions of, this, of, of our country are owned by rich bankers all over the world. And on and on and on. Yes, I understand all that. But we have to, ha we have to eat. Okay? There's a difference in being in this world and being of this world. And I want to tell you, if you're part of this world, and, and I've said this before and I will say this again. Because there might be some really good conspiracy theorists out there that are watching this. I hope you are. okay? Because I are one of you. I am a conspiracy theorist. Man, I get it. okay? I get the conspiracies. But I want to tell you, if you're not born again, if you're not saved, if you're still harboring sins and a sinful lifestyle in your heart, you're as much a part of a New World Order system as you think the Bilderbergs, the Rockefellers, the Bush family, as you think anybody else is, you're just as much a part of it. There are only two types of people in this world. Saved and lost. That's it. And I want to ask you today, are you saved? Are you born again? Uh, have you called upon the name of the Lord to be saved? Well, I don't, I don't believe in religion. Well, I don't care. Okay? 
I'm telling you, are you saved? You're going to go stand before when you die. When the government troops come in and shoot you for being on the red list, which I believe, when you die, you're going to stand and give an account to God. And God's not going to ask you, are you a patriot? Are you part of the militia? Did you watch Glenn Beck every day? Because yeah, if you did, I mean, I'll let you in. That's not what God's going to say. God's not going to say, well, you were a tea party, so I'm going to let you in. No. He's going to look at the book. And if your name and all the sins that you committed, by the way, they're all written down. If all of those sins that you committed are written down, uh, they're not covered red with the blood of Jesus Christ. You're going to end up in the same burning hell as Lucifer, all of his angels, all the unsaved Rockefeller clans, all of the Adolf Hitler. You're going to end up there with all of them for all of eternity. And it won't matter that you went to a tea party. And it won't matter that you gave somebody a, a pirated copy of Alex Jones' video. It won't matter. Okay? Because your sins were not covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. God loves you so much. He loves you enough and He cares about you and He wants you to be saved. And I know we do this Watchman broadcast and we talk about all the issues and sometimes the gospel just gets left out of it. Well, I'm throwing it in today. And I'm going to ask you today, are you saved? And you know what? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if we're going to be standing in line together to get our heads cut off, and then after that, I would like to see you around the table of Jesus Christ in heaven for all of eternity. I love you. I've got to quit talking now. You pray for my throat. Pray for our ministry. Pray for our country. There are some things, I believe, coming right around the corner. Let's be watchmen on the wall. Let's warn people. Let's get the message out. Time is running out. This is Pastor Mike. I love you. I'm praying for you. I appreciate you praying for me. If you'd like to get on our watchers list and receive all of our, our materials on a monthly basis, just send us your name and postal address and we'll get you on that list. We ask for just a, a monthly donation of any amount whatsoever uh, to help us with our cost. If you can't do that, just ask to be put on the list anyway. We haven't turned anybody down yet. So thank you for that. Thank you for all the support. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you on the next Pure Bible Study. I'm glad I have a Pure Bible Study. Y'all have a good week. Take care. Bye-bye.